Bruno, on your side, uh, is the list that Andrew uh, shared with us exhaustive or are you suggesting something else? Oh, it's very exhaustive. Uh, what Andrew shared with us and Florent as well, uh, it's, it's quite comprehensive. To move to circularity, uh, for me, what is important, uh, if I may say, is that we square the circle. So we have several issues everywhere. We need industrial strengths. We need investment into biotechnology, which is also close to the chemical sector at the level that we see in the pharmaceutical industry, for instance. You, you are amazed because health is such a problem, but the waste we are generating are also causes, causing health problems. So we need to invest in this, uh, in this industry. We need to have access to the feedstock, which is the, the waste, the quality, and, and this access. So we need to develop a collection and sorting and just move away from the incineration and the landfilling, uh, which is not uh, what we should be doing. We need to put the asset at scales. And so there is also an investment needed. We need to accelerate. And the chemical sector will need some money to invest in these things. And we need also customer commitments. And here is probably where the regulatory pressure can help or incentivize. And for me, what is interesting is that today you have in some countries, like in China, you cannot use waste to make food grade contact material, but you can use oil. And I doubt that anyone in this room will drink a little bit of oil and feel safe. So why a dirty material like oil, which contains a lot of nasty chemicals, even radioactive material can be used to make food grade contacts where our waste, which are not clean, but can be very clean when you go swim through these kind of technologies, cannot be used to make food grade contacts. So you have a lot of roadblocks that have been built, even circulating the waste from one country to the next country, just to use them and reuse them is quite difficult. So regulatory need to build a policy around what we are generating, not using in the proper way to enable and to facilitate the use of this waste. And for the customer or for the consumer, of course, there is some education. Our waste, our resources are not anymore something that we throw away without taking care of where they are ending up, including in the ocean. So, yeah, very interesting to definitely uh, looking at waste in a different way, a change of paradigm down to regulation is also needed to allow for circular economy to, uh, to become mainstream. So um, before opening to question, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, the, the spirit of this session was to share with you a little bit of the positive spin that we feel when we look at uh, innovative, promising solutions um, and, and that they go hand in hand with regulation. Regulation uh, shouldn't lag behind. Uh, because we will see that uh, uh, adoption can be hindered if there is a lag behind in the perception, in the taxonomy, in the alignment, and not only in the reporting. So all this needs to work in parallel uh, for uh, energy transition uh, to, to move faster than what we've seen up to now, and, and um, if we want to reach the net zero by 2050.